Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today for episode 5 of 5 in our series on war. So far we've talked about the history of war, how tactics have changed, we've even talked about why we love war. Because we do. We also have talked about the downer of an episode, but really interesting about PTSD and the long-term effects of war. So make sure you check all of those out. Today we're going to talk about computer warfare. This is like the newest, the most cutting edge warfare. Some of the most famous computer warfare is Stuxnet. You know, it's made a lot of headlines. It was a computer worm which became famous around 2010. It primarily spreads through USB sticks or USB keys, so it's not necessarily on the internet, although it could be spread that way. So you plug in this USB stick to a computer not connected to the internet, and it would spread locally across that closed network. The worm only does one thing. It looks for a particular model of a programmable logic controller, a PLC, basically a control chip for huge machinery, industrial machinery. The PLC it's looking for is usually responsible for controlling machinery in specific places like factories, power plants, centrifuges. It's most famous for attacking a nuclear power plant in Iran. And it's believed that it was designed and released for a while mysteriously, but Edward Snowden says it was the United States and Israel, they think, although there are also clues that the US did it. Which is really interesting because this would be one of the first examples, concrete examples, of a government attacking another government through a computer virus that we have. Digital warfare is kind of insane to think about. You know, when you think back to the tactics section of our episode this week, we're thinking about it as like lots of people, slightly fewer people, and then only a handful or one. That's pretty much digital warfare, right? This is war where I can take one person or a few people in a few computers and infect whole countries, whole planets, <laughs> if we're going that way. Two security breaches in the US Office of Personal Management were in the headlines pretty recently uh, because of breaches that compromise data. Now, just saying compromise data, what does that mean? It means that every person who's ever had a government background check in the last 15 years was leaked to someone who hacked in and took it. That's likely all government employees that were hired in that time. OPM, uh, the Office of Personnel Management, is like the HR department for the federal government. They're the ones who do all of that information. That's 21.5 million people who may have had their information accessed. That includes social security numbers, fingerprints. That's really personal stuff. And they think because of how it was accessed and what was accessed, security experts say that the attack most likely came from China. Potentially China trying to find out who works for the government here in the US, right? The Justice Department indicted five members of Unit 61398, a hacking unit of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, accusing them of stealing data from American firms which would benefit state-owned companies. After the accusations, we saw a temporary pause in corporate hacking coming out of China. They know it's coming out of China because data backbones from China to the United States are monitored by all sorts of different groups. So you can see the data that's going anywhere. Nobody on the internet is truly anonymous. It's all traceable. But according to the Washington Post, it led the CIA to pull spies out of China in 2015 because there was fear that the hackers might have used this background data, fingerprint data, social security data to identify CIA agents. This is crazy. We should totally do like a spy episode. So neat. In another example, Pentagon officials have said blueprints and secret technology for the F-35 fighter jet might have been taken by a Chinese military group called the Technical Reconnaissance Bureau. And then that was used in Chinese stealth jets called the J-20 and J-31. The F-35 is super expensive. It's cost $400 billion to build over the past two decades, and they don't actually have any F-35s really out there. And China just hacked in and took it, they used the information. You're welcome, China. Representative Mike Rogers, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, said, quote, the viciousness and volume of attacks not only by the Chinese, but Russians and others trying to get the blueprints of our most sensitive material is just breathtaking, and they're getting better. That's scary. 
But China, of course, has consistently denied that they are hacking anybody. They're saying things like the government does not sponsor any form of hacking. They're saying that uh, Chinese laws prohibit cyber crimes of all forms. That's according to a Chinese embassy spokesman. And of course, the Chinese government firmly opposes any forms of hacking, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Hong Lei said. And of course, the Chinese military has never supported any hacker attack or hacking activities, says the People's Liberation Army. But even though they're saying all these things publicly, they can kind of tell where these hacks are coming from. Because cyber warfare isn't like the battles of years past. I don't have to march an army out in front of everybody. All I gotta do is push a few buttons on a keyboard. In 2015, it became more apparent that China might be hacking. <laughs> because China's Academy of Military Sciences, it's like their top research institute, published the Science of Military Strategy. And it reveals that China splits its hacking groups into three categories. They have so many hacking groups, they gotta split them up. They split them into operational military units, teams with civilian organizations that have been given authorization to hack, and external entities, I'm finger quoting, which are like mercenaries, government contractors, and such. This is the first time ever that China has acknowledged that hackers exist for things other than defense. They're trying to go out and get information. But to be fair, China Daily, a media company, reports that a third of all attacks against the Chinese originated in the United States. So they might be hacking us, but apparently we're hacking back, according to China Daily. When asked why the United States doesn't respond any better than the Chinese government does, they say the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, says it's because the U.S. engages in the same type of espionage and we're not bad at it. He says, but Obama and Xi Jinping agreed during a meeting in 2015 that they weren't going to conduct cyber theft of trade secrets. They weren't going to take intellectual property and do that for commercial gain. But whether or not that's going to be respected by intelligence agencies and military agencies, that's a whole different thing. Who knows where cyber war is going to go? This is just the beginning. Computers have not been around long enough. The internet has not been around long enough to be able to hack into all these databases and have such wide sweeping gains militarily as it has been in the last decade or two. War has affected us and our society for as long as we've had society. Yes, it's changed. You know, We're not marching around on battlefields. We're not shooting bows and arrows at each other anymore, unless you're in the Avengers. We're not doing any number of the things that we used to do, but we're still essentially throwing rocks at each other and trying to get the other country or the other person to break, right? Cyber warfare is technological rocks, but they're rocks nonetheless. Or maybe you're trying to steal their rocks. I don't know if this metaphor is working. But either way, we love war, we hate war, and we are all affected by war which is why we thought it would be really interesting to talk about it here today on Test Tube Plus. So I hope you enjoyed this series on war. Let us know down in the comments if you have like a favorite war movie, something that we didn't talk about on this episode that you wanted to hear. And make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes of Test Tube Plus. We'll be back soon with some more. And you can come find us on Twitter at Test Tube if you have suggestions. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. We'll see you later.